Hello, myself Dr. Kasturi Paipide Rani, and I'm going to be teaching you Fundamentals of Music, Part 1, in the first term. So this course is about Indian classical music and a few other forms uh, in Indian music, in which we are going to learn about the basic concepts in Indian music. Concepts like Swar, Lai, Tal, Saptak, different types of bandishes, and also why music is an important and integral part of human life. So to start with, today we are going to learn about Swara and Laya. Let me share the screen with you. Yes. So the first question that comes to our mind is when we think about Indian classical music or any Indian music or any music in this world, what is music made up of? You know, what are the two main ingredients which make music? So these two main ingredients are swara and laya. Laya is different from tal. We will understand it later how it is different. But Swara and Laya are the two main important aspects or ingredients of any kind of music, be it Indian music, Indian classical music, Indian rock music, uh, popular music, or world music, Caribbean music, European music, African music, any kind of music is made up of Swara and Laya. So what exactly is swar? So swara is a musically useful sound with frequency. So when we come to swar, when we think about swar, we have to understand that there are many sounds present around us in this world. There are many sounds. There is a sound of um, breeze. There is sound of uh, water flowing. There is a sound of a wind blowing. There is sound of when, when the car passes by, there is some kind of sound. There are many such sounds which are present all around us. Are they useful for music? Are they useful for making music? No. So that means not all sounds that are present in this world around us are useful for music. So there are only some kind of sounds, some type of sounds which are filtered, those are used for music. So how do you distinguish them from the sounds that are 
around us. So the sounds which are used for making music are called Nad in Sanskrit or in Marathi or in Hindi also. So what are these sounds which are present around us? There are some very cacophonic sounds also around us, which we don't want to listen for a long time. When we listen to such sounds, we, we say that we don't want to listen to it. We try to shut our ears. So these kind of sounds do not make music. So what are these called? These are called as dhwani, which is also uh, called in Sanskrit, in Marathi and Hindi. So dhwani is sound. So what we hear around us are all dhvanis or any kind of sound, not necessarily which are useful for music. So what are the sounds that are used for music? So from these dhvanis, from these sounds, swaras or nad are filtered out. So nad is what? Nad is a sound which is consistent which stays for a long period of time. And after hearing it for a long period of time, it is pleasing to the human ear. So those are the sounds which are called as nad. You know? So any kind of, um, even all the pleasing sounds are also not used for music. Like when we go to a beach, and we listen to waves coming. We can listen to this wave sound for a long period of time. It is not that uh, we don't like it, but those sounds are not directly used for making music or th those are not, we cannot call, uh, call them as the swaras. So, uh, so there are few pleasing sounds also, like when there is sound of wind, sometimes we like to listen to it when there is uh, when the breeze uh, goes past many trees it makes a nice sound when the trees are um, you know shaking the sound of the leaves because of the wind so that is also pleasing to the ears but that is not useful for making music so then what is nad nad is even beyond that so it does not mean that only pleasing sound to the ears is important in uh, what makes the swara of music. But it is beyond that. It has to be pleasing. It also has to be consistent. And it can be sung or played for a long period of time. Okay, so that is very important. So that is why I've written that swara is a musically useful sound with a particular frequency. Okay, so swara beyond art is what? It is actually a scientific frequency, which is used for making music. Now the use of the swaras in different genres of music is different. Like the Carnatic Indian classical music and the Hindustani classical music, the North Indian classical music. There is a, variety, there is a variation in what frequencies are used but they are frequencies of sound. So there are seven basic swaras which are used in making music of in Indian classical music. So what are these seven swaras? So these are the nadas, the nad, which have been given names like sa, re, ga, ma, P, Dh, Ni, and Sa. So the there are names for each swar. Sa is Sharja. Re is Rishabha. Ga is Gandhar. Ma is Madhyama. P is Pancham. Dh is Dhaivata. Ni is Nishad and Sa is Shadjake. So these are the Swaras. These are the names of the Swaras. Okay. Each Swar has different frequency. Okay. I'll also demonstrate these Swaras to you 
So I'll just repeat the names again. Sa is Sharja. Re is Rishabha. Ga is Gandhar. Ma is Madhyama. Pa is Panchama. Dha is Dhaivata. Ni is Nishad. And Sa is Sharja. I will just share the screen with you again, another screen, which has the names of these swaras. Yes. Yes. So this is, you can see that these are the swaras in the North Indian system of Raga. So, Sharja, Rishabha, Gandhara, Madhyama, Panchama, Dhaivata, and Nishada are the seven swaras that are used in Indian classical music. So there are short forms of these swaras because we cannot say, we, we cannot sing Sharjarishabha, that is not possible. So these are the short forms of the swaras that are used, which are Sa for Sharja, Re for Rishabha, Ga for Gandhara, Ma for Madhyama, Pa for Panchama, Dha for Dhaivata, and Ni for Nishada. Okay, so these are the Shuddha Swaras. Now we also come to the Komal Swaras, before which we will sing the Shuddha Swaras. Sa. Sa. 
So these are the Shuddha Swaras as we call or the natural notes as we say in English. Sare Ga Ma Pa Dha Ni Sa. Now there are also Komal and Tevra Swaras which are called as the Shuddha and the Vikrut Swaras. So there are two types of Swaras. One is the Shuddha type. Another is the Vikruta type. So what is Shuddha Swaras? The Swars that I just sang in front of you, Sare Gama Padha Nisa, are the Shuddha Swaras. And the Vikruta Swaras are the Swaras which are Komal or Tibra. So which all Swaras can be Vikruta? Re, Ga, Ma, Dha and Me. These are the five swars which can become Vikrut. So, <clears throat> Sa and Pa are the two swaras which do not become Koman or Tira. They just remain in their natural form always. But Re, Ga, Ma, Dha and Me can become Koman or Tira. Now, from this Re, Ga, Ma, Dha, Me, only Re, Ga, Dha and Me can become Koman. And Ma can only become Tevra. Okay? So that makes it 12 Swaras in all. Shuddha 7 Swaras and 5 Vikruta Swaras makes it 12 Swaras in all. So we'll also, I'll show you how Komal and Tevra Swaras are sung. Sa Re Komali Re Ga Komali Ga Sare Ga Ma Ma is Shuddha Ma 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 is Tibra Madhya Ma. Ma Pa Dha Komal Dha Dha Ni Shuddha Ni Ni Komal Ni Sa Sa Re Shuddha Re Sa Re Komal Re Ga Shuddha Ga Ga Komal Ga Ma Ma Shuddha Ma Ma Tibra Ma Dha Shuddha Dha Dha Komal Dha Ni Shuddha Ni Ni Komal Ni Sa So these are the Komal and Tibra varieties of Swaras.
Okay. So uh, we just saw the types of swaras that are used in Indian classical music. Now we'll also see what is a saptak. We just I just sang Saregama Padhanisa in Madhya Saptak. Man, there are three types of saptak. One is Mandra Saptak, one is Madhya Saptak, and the Tara Saptak. So the Saptak, Saptak is basically scale in which we sing. And there are three Saptaks usually, widely, which are used. So this Saptak or the scale in which we usually speak is the Madhya Saptak. Mandra Saptak is the lower Saptak and Tara Saptak is the higher Saptak. I'll just show you. Hmm. Madhya Saptak. Now I will show you the Mandra Saptak. Sa Ni Dha So I went till about Pancham or Madhyam in the lower sector or the Mandra sector, which is lower than the Madhya sector. It is in the lower um, sector. The Western musicians use a term called octave in the sector. Then there is Tara sector. Sa This is called the Tara Saptak. So basically, there are three types of Saptaks that are used very widely. And when there is a, uh, when somebody sings as a performance or any song, if you see, uh, each song will uh, most, most probably have three saptaks used. There are some notes which are used in Mandra Saptak also. Largely, the song would be there in the Madhya Saptak. And there are some swars, few swars are used from the Tara Saptak also. So all, the ty all types of saptaks are used in any kind of musical performance. When all the saptaks are used, the music, the performance appears to be very, um, large because you when you when when we use more sub, more subtaks that means more number of notes and that's how it makes the performance to be very wide and large huge so um, it is usually said that when a singer practices or makes his or her voice ready for a performance for singing he or she practices a lot on making his or her voice useful and making her, his or her voice um, ready to sing in all the saptaks. Because usually we use only one saptak for in our day-to-day -day life for speaking, which is the Madhya saptak. We don't usually speak in Tara saptak, which is which you will do only if you're screaming or yelling at somebody. And Mandra saptak you will use sometimes when you're very sad and gloomy and you really want to speak in a very low tone. That is the time when you would use Madhya Saptak. But every day largely, we use only Madhya Saptak. 
But when you sing, if you want to use mandra and taras of the call so equally proficiently, then the singer has to put a lot of efforts and make his voice or her voice ready to be able to flawlessly sing in both the subjects. I hope the uh, swara part of the music is clear. Now we will go to the laya part of music. What is laya? Now laya is the process where sounds are separated by time. It is also called, it is also known as the meter, widely speaking. Hmm? So laya is different from tal. Laya is different from rhythm. Many uh, people confuse between both the terms. But laya is different than tal and the, or the rhythm also. So uh, laya is, it is, laya is constantly flowing. Laya does not stop for anyone. Okay. Laya can be very easily understood. Laya in music is another thing, but laya, if you want to uh, understand, it is present everywhere around us. It is present in the heartbeat of a human being, which is, which exists. We don't, we are constantly aware that it is, I mean, we don't have to constantly remember that it, uh, every, you know, everyone's heart is beating, but it does beat. That is why we are all alive and working. Pulse rate, it is a classic example of laya. Heartbeat is a classic example of laya. The day and the night is a classic, again, example of laya. The seasons, the year, the 365 days that come one after the other and each year on year, it comes and goes. It comes. So that these are all classic examples and very natural examples of Laya. So we see that Laya is everywhere in this world, in this universe. If Laya gets disturbed, even by a few seconds, then the world will collapse. Can you, if you can imagine that moon rotates in a particular Laya around the earth. Earth also has a particular speed and a particular meter, a layer with which it spins and it rotates around the sun. It is similar with seasons. It is similar with day and light. It is similar with human body. And a doctor usually keeps checking your heartbeat and what is your blood pressure and what is your pulse rate all the time to just check if it is normal, if it is in tune, if, if the speed is correct or it is disturbed. Why is that? Because if it is not normal, if it is not in check, if it is very low or very high, then there is a problem. Similar thing is with music also. This layer which is there in the world is very, very useful for music. It is an integral part of music. So these are the fundamental swara and laya are the fundamentals of music on which music stands, on which music is built. So there are different types of laya. So there is vilambit laya, which is called the slow tempo. The madhya laya, which is called as the medium tempo. And the druta laya, which is called as the fast tempo. So these are the tempos, three basically tempos, or three basic layas which are used in singing different compositions in Indian classical music. There are compositions in Vilambit, there are compositions in Madhya Lai, there are compositions in Drutalai also. Now there are, this Vilambit is further more categorized, and further more, um, there are subtypes of Vilambit. One is Ati Vilambit and another is Vilambit. Then there is Drutalai and Ati Drutalai also. So it is fast and super fast. And then Vilambit is slow and super slow. So, but more or less, there are three types of layers, mainly Vilambit, Mathi and Druta. So there are different compositions sung in these three layers.
So just put the taal for you, for you to listen. Okay, so this is the taal, you can listen. This is taal king taal, which is of 16 beats. That is, uh, put. And this is 140 beats per minute, the speed that I have put. So this is, we would call the studio Madhya Lai. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Da, de, de, da. Da, de, de, da. Da, de, de, da. Da, de, de, da. Which we can call as a Madhya Lai. Madhya Lai is a Lai which uh, which is used for which is normal speed with which we do a lot of our activities. We walk in Madhina. We do our work in Madhina. Anything slower than that is we would call Vilambi. Or anything faster than that we would call as fast or rhythm. Similarly, in singing, this is a Madhina. Anything slower than this So this is 20 per minute 20 beats per minute for example okay. 1 2 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 1. Okay. Now the bowls. Dha, Dhin, Dhin, Dha, Dha. Dhin, Dhin, Dha, Dha, Tin, Tin, Ta, Ta, Dhin, Dhin, Dha, 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 Dhin. So this is a Vilambit Teen Pai, okay, which is very slow tempo, in which Khayals are sung, Vilambit Khayals are sung in the Madhyalaya, Madhyalaya Bandishas are sung. And in Drutalaya, the fast tempo, which we'll just listen to now, This is Dhrutana. Da din din da da din din da da din din da da din din da. Eg do tin cha pa che sa ta ta des kya ra bara tera chota pa ra sola. Eg do tin cha pa che sa. Bara tera chota pa ra sola. Da din din da da din din da da din din da ta din din da da. So this is a Dhrutana in which there are again many bandishes and a lot of taranas also are sung in this life. So, these are the uh, three main layers which are used for uh, 
singing different kind of compositions in uh, Indian classical music. Uh, <clears throat> now there is, it is not only about the compositions that layas are used, lay is used. There is a lay in everything, in each and everything which is sung, right from alap to uh, tans to sargam to any kind of composition, there is laya present in each and everything. Because without laya, swar will not uh, sound pleasing to the ears. And just laya without swar will after time become very monotonous. Because laya is something which keeps happening. It is constantly flowing. Laya does not stop for anyone. Okay. So what are these thals? These thals are basically, uh, laya is uh, <coughs> number. So dha din din da, dha din din da, dha din din da, dha din din da. So thal is basically, is uh, thal din thal. Uh, the laya is basically composed or is, uh, is uh, limited in 16 beats. And that is how it is given the name of Tal, teen tal. There is laya in alap also. Whenever there is a composition, any kind of composition, and uh, whenever there is rag presentation, in each alap there is a certain lie. For example, uh, So there is a certain lay which is followed in this phrase. If I break that lay, then the phrase will not do justice to that rap. So these are the phrases which are presented with some sort of lie in it. Some phrases are very slow. Ah, it's a slower one. Ah, a different lie came in, little faster. Ah, so. Within one phrase also, there can be multiple lies which can be used and which become very important to establish that mood of the rag. Without lay, the mood of the rag, the ambience of that rag, the impact of the rag cannot be created. So it has to be a very, very a good combination of swar and lay. If we keep doing the lay aspect, uh, if we uh, focus on lay aspect more and keep the swara aspect less, then it can become very monotonous because lay is one after the other. It, it comes in, uh, the, it is basically time which is separated. It is a process which is a sound uh, separated by time and if it, is, it comes with regular intervals, it can become monotonous. So swar get, uh, gets that um, monotony uh, broken when it is swar and lay. And similarly, when it is swar, just swar, without any lay, with, without any momentum, without any speed, speed does not have to be fast always, and speed tempo, I would say. If it is swar without any tempo, then it can also get, um, uh, it can become lifeless sometimes if it is only swar and no laya in it. So it has it has to be a combination of both. And that is how different 
cultures have given importance some cultures have given more importance to swar and less importance to lay some cultures have given more importance to lay and less importance to swar in their music uh, and that is how the music becomes different the lyrical aspect comes much later but basically without any words if it has to be only music then the swar and lay are the main important aspects of any music if you see if you have seen african music in african music there is it is very very lay dominant music because it has the african drums and they play which has very less of any kind of note or melody in it but the lay aspect they have used and they have improvised they have done it in a lot of detail so their music is more um is uh, is predominant i would say in the lay aspect whereas in many other cultures there is also swar aspect if you have heard gregorian chants uh, and uh, many um, a lot of um, european music also they have lot of uh, uh, they have a lot of importance given to the swar aspect of music also so um Uh, coming to the conclusion it is important to remember that both these aspects swara and the laya are very important swara and laya are again their natural phenomenon they are not created by human beings they exist in the world in the universe nobody can create them and nobody can destroy it. both of them swara is natural swara or nad is natural okay sare gama padhani are man made we have created we have said that okay this frequency which exists in the nature we will call it sa or we will call it shabja or we will call this re or rishabha so we have named the swaras but swaras are natural we cannot create them or destroy them they are always there raga ragas are man made ragas are not natural ragas then bandishes compositions taranas triwards pori chaiti all these are man made but swara which is the most elementary factor in making all of these is natural that is very important to remember same thing in laya laya is not man made laya is very natural nobody can create laya and nobody can destroy laya taal is man made we made taal din taal we made taal ek taal we made taal jhumra taal jhap taal roopak all sorts of taal but laya which is again the elementary um, or the basic factor on which taal is built up is natural laya cannot be made by any man nor can anyone destroy it so again different lays the slow the vilambe and the madhya and the druta are also natural we see all sorts of lays in nature the lay of the waves the sea waves is different than the lay uh, of the tree swaying the lay of one one's heartbeat is different from the lay of another's heartbeat one's pulse rate can be different from another's pulse rate so lay can differ in with everyone or in different aspects like uh, the lay of um, the seasons the how the seasons change in india can be different from the season changing in the west they have a different set of things but the lay is everywhere it can be different in different places but it does exist and it is different for everyone it can we can only create um something build on laya and swara we can only create 
taal or we can create ragas or we can create music based on these two elements so that is why any kind of music uh, is built on swara and lala it cannot have one of these missing based on this we will also uh, we will discuss um, about different more phenomenons that are used in indian classical music um which are widely used but we must remember that these two are the fundamentals of any kind of uh, music also uh, it is not very easy to um uh, get mastery over swara and laya it is not easy to get mastery over swara and laya um even if it is uh, we say that it is a natural phenomenon swara and laya but it is even more difficult to get mastery and the top uh, musicians that we see in our country vocalist or instrumentalist they have been able to get mastery over swara and laya because it is something which is natural it exists in the world and the person trying to get mastery over it has to uh, spend a lifetime on getting the mastery over these two phenomenons so um to be um uh the many people like you name and then uh, pandit bhim sen joshi pandit ravi shankar uh pandit um <clears throat> jitendra abhishekhi ustad bismillah khan any any artist all the top artists of this country they have spent their life times to gain mastery and command over swar and lai that is why uh, years are spent in making a disciple in uh, giving him or her training in music because to gain mastery over swar and also lai is very important and it takes many years it cannot be um one cannot gain command over lai and swar in few months or few even years it takes decades and uh, many more to um, gain command because it is very subtle it is very intangible it is very difficult to um, understand and imbibe in one's life so that is why it is it takes many years to make an artist and uh have a good performing uh, artist who has gained command over um swar and lai to conclude uh, uh from today's class we must remember that uh, uh we discussed that we discussed the fundamentals of music today two main factors the swara and the laya we discussed we discussed types of swaras um different types of swaras and um different types of laya which are used in singing and how music is built over these two uh important elements and also we saw different examples of um different layers different layers and uh, uh we saw uh, uh we saw different uh Uh, komal and shuddha and tivra swaras which are uh, sung so we have to remember that there are 12 swaras in all komal and shuddha together um and three basic types of lai that are used thank you